heel tap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, sorry, you can go right back down. We're gonna do one leg at a time, lifting that right leg, laying down the left, go across your body and out. Now with this exercise today, I want both shoulders down and I want both hips down. Okay, and you're drawing just like a line on the ceiling. It doesn't even have to be very big. What we're focused on is as we go across, all of this draws in, and as we go out, we don't let it out. It stays contracted and pulled in and not rocking your shoulders or your hips. Very important philosophy in Pilates is to keep the shoulders and the hips aligned with each other. And you exhale across, inhale to open, exhale across, inhale to open. If you're having a hard time with your range of motion, bend the knee and do the same thing. Reducing that lever really does help take some of the pressure off. Then bring it to the center, lay that leg down, draw the other one up, either bent or straight, go across the body first and then out. Exhale to go across, inhale out. Exhale to go across, inhale out. Two more. Exhale across, inhale out, and one more. Exhale across, inhale out, draw it in, and again, if you're sitting up, you use your hands on the side to help you sit up. All right, so we're turning on to our belly now. Important when you lay on your belly that you don't let the muscles push down into the floor or into the mat. That is the hardest part of laying on your belly at any time. So coming down and allowing yourself to lie on your belly, put your forehead on your hands and just listen to my voice for a second. Tuck your tailbone under you until you feel your navel lift. Get the fronts of your thighs nice and strong and get your legs nice and long and strong. You want to keep that position when you're here and then push your shoulders down your back and all you're doing is lifting and lowering the elbows. Lifting and lowering the elbows. You're like, why am I lifting and lowering my elbows? Well, even this slight motion can sometimes cause us to push the core muscles the wrong way and we're training them to pull up and in. That's what we're doing. We're also strengthening the entire erector spinae, which surrounds our spine all the way from the top to the bottom just by doing this little motion here. It's an important one and one that we don't do enough. It opens the front body, it strengthens the back body, and it trains our core. Okay, the next thing is going to be lying back on our back again. We're gonna do some sweeping circles, one leg at a time. This one's fun, and I want you to work your very best. So we have been doing side to side, right? So now we're gonna sweep some circles around. Bring the right leg in, lift it up, and we're gonna sweep some circles around. Sweep them around and then go the other way. Sweep it around and go the other way. At the same time, the left leg is pushing down into the floor and it's not wobbling side to side. You're keeping that leg nice and long and strong and you're trying to draw a really nice basketball size circle. If you're having a hard time, reduce the size of your circle or even bend your knee and do the same motion. Set that leg down, other leg comes up, you're doing the same thing. Go in one direction and then go in the other direction and you might find the one direction is easier than the other. Breathing in as the leg goes away from you, exhaling as it comes up and towards you. Breathing in as it goes away, exhale as it comes up. Finding that position and pressing down into the leg that's on the floor to keep you stable. Breathe in and exhale up. Breathe in and exhale up. Breathe in and exhale up. And then bend the knee and set it down. And I believe we have one more. We do. Okay, so we're gonna do a modified dead bug we're back on our back again, and instead of doing any kind of V-sits or sit-ups, which you should not be doing if you have a core injury, modified dead bug just looks like this. You're taking one arm and one leg up and out and up and down. Other side goes up and out and up and down. So what we're doing is opposite arm, opposite leg, making it longer and making it shorter. Your range of motion is what you can control. With your free hand, check it. Make sure that you are able to keep everything tucked up and in, and if you can't, reduce your range of motion. Don't go quite as far. It's really important that you keep the muscles in. Otherwise, we train them to go the wrong way, cause all kinds of problems. That's it. That was your core workout that you can use with Shift Shop or really anything else. I just gave you a lot of the exercises that I use live and in person for my seminars, my trainings, and my classes. So please use them, learn them, pass them along, help somebody else. 
You know, two out of three people that have ever been pregnant have issues with diastasis. We've got to do better at passing the information along and helping people. Do you know that 15 to 20 percent of the rest of the population has diastasis? Many of them are men and they wonder why their belly sticks out. This is to help you. Use these exercises. Check out the diastasis recti recovery system because it will not work all together unless you treat it as a system and as a process. My name is Carrie. You can find me at CarrieFit.com. Please subscribe to these videos. I put them up as often as I possibly can. Enjoy the rest of your day and thanks for hanging out with me. Go play with Shift Shop.